Welcome in, Peter Gammons. Peter, welcome. And I'll tell you, after seeing the Red Sox last week, boy, incredibly impressive. And what a what a uh, a difference Napoli and Victorino have made for that team. I mean, they they really put on an incredible display at Yankee Stadium. They did. I mean, it, the one thing, Mike, that reminded me, though, it is amazing balls that can go out in Yankee Stadium. Uh, I mean, I mean, the, the, the home run by Napa, the home run by Middlebrooks off uh, Mariano, Mariano. Yep. they're not exactly uh, moon shots. No, the uh, Napoli by, ball, by, but you know one thing as, as being there like I have forever, anything in the air to right field, you hold your breath because you know uh, anything can go out and usually does. In the worst spot, every ball, in a big spot, when that thing's in the air, you know it's usually going to go out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when they got Napoli, when they signed Napoli, they knew this was before he had the hip problem and the contract got delayed. But they they knew what they were getting. They were getting a guy who's very streaky, but um, you know he is a very potent bat. And in April and again in September, he's been terribly important to them. And uh, Victorino is a really good player. I I knew Victorino was a good outfielder. I never realized until I watched him every day what an incredible right fielder. I mean, if you play in Fenway Park. Really, it's pitcher first, catcher second, right fielder third. And that's why they were so lucky all those years when um, when Dwight Evans played there, who was an absolutely great right fielder. And actually, I mean, he took a lot of grief there, but J.D. Drew was a really good right fielder too. And that defense in that position, and what Victorino does so well is he moves around on every pitch. I mean, that's kind of become, to me, something of a lost art. They get so wrapped up in scouting reports. They don't go, they, they don't, uh, fielders don't move with what the catcher and pitcher are trying to do. And uh, that's really helped them. But they, they're good. I mean, Bogarts is going to be a terrific player. Oh, man, and what a home run he hit the other day, huh? And then made a barehanded play. But I'll tell you what I noticed, Peter, more importantly than anything is, obviously they look like characters with the beards, but they have the same kind of camaraderie and abandon that they had with the idiots. They remind me of the 2004 team, the way they acted, the way they responded to each other. They are a very together group that I think will be very tough in the playoffs. Oh, I, I think so too. I mean, I, I think obviously they start to get one piece tonight with Buckles pitching. And they still have to figure out um, how they use depth in the bullpen because it's going to be hard to play in the playoffs and avoid um, getting you Yuri up without putting him in a game and without using him in closing situations on consecutive days. But they've done a very good job managing that. And but they they could be a very dangerous team. I mean, I think Ellsbury is is important to them. I think he will be back. Um, but they're, they're going to be good. I'll tell you, the, the, the series that was terrific was the Tiger-Red Sox series, not the 20-2 game. I mean, each team, well, well, we all know, every team, you can, you can get into the soft underbelly of a bullpen and run up 20 runs. But um, that was a really intense, well pit series. The Lester of Scherzer matchup where two guys sitting at 97 miles an hour was really impressive. That's a very good series. And, and – uh, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm also going to be very interested uh, to see how Oakland fares. If they can win that West again, um, they're a really underappreciated team. They just have so much depth that they're very dangerous. Um, and they, they scared the daylights out of the Tigers last year, making Verlander come back in, in game five of the ALDS and pitch a great game. I mean, they could be very tough again, even though I think they would start with two games in Detroit, which they don't want to have to do. And I'll tell you, watch out for your old friend Francona because 14 of their last 19 are against the White Sox, Twins, and Astros. And if they do away with the with Kansas City here and they let the AL East teams knock each other off, the Indians could be the recipients here. And, you know, the game they got out of Kazmir against the Mets, we struck out 12 guys in six innings. They are nursing these pitches through five and six inning starts. I mean, he's done a great job with that team. He's done a great job. Mickey Callaway, the pitching coach, is a rising star, in my opinion. And he spent so much of the winter last year with Ubaldo Jimenez down in Dominican. And there are a ton of times in spring training since June 1st. He's got a 2.75 ERA. He's been really good. And it, that was a huge win for them last night, for him and his winning the first game against Kansas City. They've got a couple of really good 
big power he's yelling pictures I know they've done a nice job and I'll tell you and I mean you know you were around him when he was with the Yankees he, you know people could say what they want about Jason Giambi but he is a wonderful person to have on your team yeah, and they, and they love Swisher, too. You know, Swisher oh, hasn't had a great year, but Swisher, you know, they love Swisher there, too. Well, you know, you need some veterans around to not panic when they lose three in a row. I mean, if you're in Cleveland or Pittsburgh or Kansas City, some of those places where they haven't won, lose three in a row and people are going, oh, they'll never win. Same old, same old. And you need you need guys like uh you need guys like Gianni and Swisher. And you know, it's, it's funny to me, and I, I don't know if it will ever happen because of um, him having to go into uh, – had to, having to testify in San Francisco, but uh, it's amazing how much I hear from people around the Indians, players, Terry Francona, the front office, how much they think Jason Giambi would be a terrific manager, <laughs> which, you know, as, as he said to me – I don't think you would have said that 10 years ago. But, no, it's amazing, uh, but everyone says it. Everyone swears by him. I mean, Frank Conner told me that. He said that to this audience on the air. He said the guy is going to be a great manager. 